All right, well, good to see you guys. We are here today to uh, discuss, uh, really the topic is, does God expect Christians to vote? Mm. And uh, I have several kind of lead-in statements I'd like to uh, put out before you guys, and then we'll kind of take some comments and go from there. Uh, many will say, never mix politics and religion. Um, I'll submit that if this is the way that we think, then we're greatly misunderstanding God's own nature. If, if we pray the Lord's Prayer and we truly believe the words that we are praying, when it says, Thy kingdom come, that's a pretty loaded, politically loaded prayer. By praying these words, we're asking that God Himself will come to earth and rule over it, just as He already does in heaven. We're not praying that our souls will escape from planet earth and go up to heaven, but instead what we're praying for there is that, will God, will, that God will invade our world and literally take charge of it. Now, politics is far more than just voting in a general election. As Christians, we seek God's reign in every second of our lives, not just once every four years. So I would say that voting is, uh, at the very least, uh, what we need to do as believers to participate in the democratic process that we're fortunate enough to be a part of. As Christians, it's especially important that we honor God with our votes by electing people whose beliefs are biblically based. Now, we all know that everyone has an opinion, but <laughs> Proverbs 16.2 tells us that all a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. So it is not us, but it is God who's making the ultimate decision when it comes to how the votes will be cast, and ultimately God does determine who will be elected. In that, it's also important that we remember that God may be raising up wicked leaders to a position of power as a means to accomplish His will and His purpose, even if we don't understand what that will and that purpose is. So I would submit that that speaks to the sovereignty of God Himself. So Cliff, you recently uh, wrote an article for the Laurel Magazine that was entitled, Should We Keep Our Faith Out of Our Politics? So I'll let you expound on that for us. Um, so a lot of the discussion over these last few, uh, last several months has had almost every topic pointing back to politics. Um, but often, and we obviously hear it every year when election cycle's coming up, you do need, you need to keep your religion out of your politics or, or religious people don't need to be speaking into the political realm which obviously is anti what our founders, um, that, that is not what separation of church and state is about. It's keeping the state out of the church. Um, so all that set aside, my, my argument my, is that it's impossible for Christians, not just Christians, it's impossible for any person whether they're an atheist, whether they're a Bible-believing Christian, a, a Jewish person, I don't care what your beliefs are, it's impossible for us to keep that out of our political decision-making. Mm -hmm. and, and we shouldn't pretend that it, that it doesn't, that it doesn't affect it. It should affect it. It doesn't mean that we claim, you know, God is on the side of this political party or this political person. God is on the side of righteousness, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. Our duty is to let the, the, the Word of God and the Holy Spirit's power in us dictate not just our political beliefs and our decisions, but all of our decisions, <laughs> including political ones. So I, I, I think it is sort of a farce um, for us to be told you, you need to keep your politics, you need to keep your religion mm -hmm. out of your politics. That doesn't make any sense. Nobody does that. Um, so, you know, I, I, I tried to go through a, f a few of the points for specific to believers in Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. why we can't. Mm -hmm. um, you mean to sort of talk through some of that, yeah, or you got you, some specific Well, <laughs> well you, you, the first one you said was, you, you said we ultimately and literally serve a king, that we're part of an eternal monarchy. So as Christians, he, here is where our basis is, yeah. is that Philippians 3.20 says, but our citizenship is in heaven, and from it, we await a Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. 
we are, we have dual citizenship in a way, but our citizenship here is temporal and our citizenship with Christ for et- is eternal. That's a, that is an eternal kingdom that mm-hmm. the Bible says is actually here living inside believers. So our, our duty is first and foremost to serve the King of Kings. Right. That, that actually is part of the reason why it's so problematic for dictatorships um, in other countries. When Christianity starts to rise, those di- dictators start to feel their allegiance is mm-hmm. not to me first and foremost. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Doggone right. right. And it's supposed to be. Right. And so here's where the two concepts meet in that we as believers understand that we literally are ultimately serving Jesus Christ as Lord, Savior, and King. But second, God commands us to work and pray for the good of the cities that we live in. Right. <laughs> Um, Jeremiah 29, 7 says, But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray that the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. Christians are called to be involved in their communities, Mm -hmm. to be invested in their communities. Yes. What's crazy is this this passage is speaking to people in exile. This is not even really their city, right. their place, right. but he's still saying, seek the good of that city. So, uh, which, that, is, which is a preview of us. We're in exile here in the world. Yes. This, is, this is not our home. Right. This is only temporary. And I think that non-believers sometimes, um, they make that statement that, keep your faith out of politics. And it's human nature to to prioritize things, mm-hmm. whether you're a believer or not a believer. You want to say, well, okay, this is what's most important to me, uh, you know, my, my family, my job, mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. And sometimes Christians fall into the trap of, okay, God first and then family and then this and mm-hmm. then that and then mm-hmm. my job and whatever. However, um, as Christ's ambassadors, He's supposed to be in all of those Absolutely. things. We're not just supposed to put him in a box saying, okay, this is this is when I give my time to God and think about him. He's supposed to he's he's supposed to be the, the fullness of mm-hmm. everything in our life. Yes. And, and the fact that he points to this is actually for your good, even in the temporary. Right. That, that the good of the city for their welfare welfare will be for your welfare too. So we 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 have to vote and speak to issues that are going to affect our our right now temporal uh, dwelling place in exile because it is for our good, our kids' good, our grandkids' good, all the people in the community we live in. I I, I, I don't actually I don't understand how people come to the conclusion, you just need to stay out of politics. Because right. it affects so much. Right. And, and as you just said, I mean, not only does God command us to be involved in our communities and even in in the politics of it, the, the other side of that was your third point, that if Christians are not involved in political issues and decisions, then God ignoring people will be left to run the governing bodies. Yes. Um, this is... Uh, um, Proverbs 29, 12 says, If a ruler listens to falsehood, all his officials will be wicked. Mm -hmm. When the righteous increase, the people rejoice, Mm -hmm. and when the wicked rule, the people groan. Edmund Burke uh, made this statement. He said, All that is required for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. Absolutely. And so that's the other side of it Mm -hmm. is if we do not, if we choose not to participate, Mm -hmm. then what's left are Mm -hmm. the unbelievers, the wicked, the God ignoring, mm-hmm. the God slandering people are the ones who are left to fill those positions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, how has that served us in culture? Oof. We Now, I know that, that Christians get blackballed often now, <clears throat> but, but let's back up, back up 75 years when film and TV and some of that was really getting started. If, if Christians had taken a really, really strong stance and tried to do everything they could to not just be in that, that land, but to not compromise, because what you see is 75 years of smaller compromises oh, yeah. mm-hmm. and where we are now. Mm-hmm. And we, we let that go. We, yeah. it, now, Hollywood is, if you're, if you're a conservative Christian in Hollywood, your days are numbered. Right. <laughs> 
That right. did not go well for us there. Why, right. why would we think that politics would be any different? Right. And just as you've said, that because we have let that go, and I'm, and I'm speaking to we as Christians, yes. that we have sat back many decades mm -hmm. and let these things slip by so that ultimately our, we, we've been on that downward mm -hmm. spiral, whereas now ultimately our governing leader, leaders are a reflection of the people who voted them into office. I, I couldn't agree more. I was thinking the same thing that, you know, in Pastor Joey going through Romans 1 and, and the giving over to a depraved mind, it's, um, you could make the case that, the biblical case, that nations get rulers that they deserve mm -hmm. when you compromise on the word and you right. see this gradual this, this gradual descent right. into lawlessness. Um, yeah. So it's no surprise that our culture is where it is absolutely. today when we go back and look at this gradual, mm -hmm. gradual decline. Mm -hmm. So, Jamie, um, you have a, a, a sermon outline uh, that was, uh, that's entitled, What Does God's Word Say About How to Vote and Who to Vote For? Mm -hmm. So I'll ask you in kind of a shorter question there, does God expect Christians to vote? <laughs> well, the, the, the answer in short is yes, absolutely. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making His appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Um, so, like I said before, everything that we do, um, we are an ambassador, a representative of Christ, and that includes um, how we how we partake in civic duties. Mm -hmm. um, and Christ was not idle uh, about politics. Mm -hmm. He was very much on the political mm -hmm. scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I think we'll all agree that it's our, it's our duty and it's our responsibility to vote for leaders who promote Christian principles. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it, it really becomes our responsibility as individuals to, to do that grunt work, to do that mm -hmm. background, to find out what it is that they actually um, stand for. And, and just as we've talked about um, uh, that sometimes God will raise up a wicked leader mm -hmm. for the purpose of fulfilling his glory, even though we might, un might not understand what that is, mm -hmm. Christians are firmly commanded to obey legitimate authority unless it contradicts the Lord's commands. Mm -hmm. So candidates or proposals that violate the Bible's commands for life, family, mm -hmm. marriage, mm -hmm. or faith should never be supported. Not at all. How, <laughs> how hard, what does that look like and how hard is that in today's culture? <clears throat> well, to, to, to go back, um, when we were talking about Hollywood and, and their gradual descent, it um, seems to me that... Um, I had this thought a minute ago and I wanted to share it that um, Hollywood has gotten to the point that entertainment is everything that the Bible says is wicked. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't want to watch a show. <laughs> Hallmark movies, mm -hmm. although we love them, mm -hmm. are not the box office best seller mm -hmm. blockbusters. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's movies with murder mm -hmm. and rape mm -hmm. and... Um, stealing and, mm -hmm. and adultery and, and everything else and, and um, so everything that everything that we consume is that we say hey that was a great movie is mm -hmm. as, is what the Bible says is uh, is wicked whereas if we look at the things that God is obviously for you see a parallel in certain political policies. For example, Genesis chapter 12 verse 3 says, God blesses those that bless Israel and mm. curses those that curse them. Mm. So it'd be hard to make the case that God is not pro-Israel. Right. Um, right. And so, it would be hard. <laughs> um, and then, um, you know, I've, I have wrestled with um, the verse that, um, wh where Jesus said, you know, turn the other cheek. Um, mm -hmm. And but then in Exodus chapter 22, verse 2, it says, If a thief is caught breaking in and is fatally struck, the defender is not guilty, mm -hmm. um, which says that, um, you know, there's, there's a pro-self-defense argument mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. That in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 16, it says, Do not stand idle when your neighbor's life is at stake. 
Um, and I don't think that Jesus was saying be a doormat for everybody mm-hmm. and just stand by in the name of love when you see someone being harmed. Right. And, mm-hmm. uh, Pastor David with the youth has a great, um, a great quote that says, um, um, not stopping someone from harming another person is not an act of love towards that person that's yeah, doing the harming. Exactly. It's an act of cowardice towards the person that's being harmed. Absolutely. Um, and so, uh, you know, there are, some, there are certainly some, some biblical principles that we can carry into, into voting. Uh, Psalm chapter 139, verse 13, uh, God cares about the unborn. Yes. We see that again in uh, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Um, and Cliff, you said before, I've, I've heard you say this before, and I, and I, and I loved it, that... Um, that is the big issue. Um, uh, pro-life versus pro-choice. Um, mm-hmm. Non-believers just just don't get it. Yeah. Um, think of all that Jesus is, and this is a long answer, but um, <laughs> uh, he is eternal life. He is the living water. He is the mm-hmm. bread of life. Mm-hmm. I mean, all these references to to life mm-hmm. that are found in Jesus, and and it would be hard to make the case that. Jesus is not pro-life. Yeah. Um, and it's also important to remember um, Psalm chapter 146, verse 3 says, Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings yeah. who cannot mm-hmm. save. Yeah. So our allegiance yeah. is not to a political leader. Right. It's not to a political right. party. Right. Um, but there are political leaders <laughs> that and, and political parties that that seem to align biblically with defending biblical principles. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I think your, your quote earlier uh, from the, the statement that Pastor David has um, really comes into play in today's society. So, so many people today, they, their, their mindset is, I just don't like confrontation. Mm-hmm. Therefore, you know, I'm just not going to say anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, I'm reminded of in, in Acts 5, Peter and the apostles had been charged by the high priest specifically not to preach or teach in Jesus' name. And yet Peter stood up and said, we must obey God rather than men. Now, you know there had to have been a consequence that came with him making that statement. And I think we do have a lot of wimpy Christians today, (laughs) and I may be one of them, because (laughs) sometimes we don't want to stick our necks out for fear of literally having it chopped off. So it, it brings to the, the point that, um, that, that as believers, we should vote as we are led through prayers yes. and through our study of God's Word mm-hmm. and the realities of the choices that are on the ballot. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we've got to be the Acts 17, 11. We've mm-hmm. got to be the Bereans. Mm-hmm. The Bereans were better than the Thessalonians because they took everything and waited against Scripture to see if it was true. So that that really calls us to do a lot of grunt work when it comes to sitting down or going to the Internet and researching every candidate's view or every proposal's view in in light of how it's being presented on on the ballot. And, And then I would also submit to say that just because a candidate professes to be a Christian Absolutely. doesn't mean that they actually have biblical beliefs. That's right. Absolutely right. right. Absolutely right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely right. In fact, you know, if we're, we, we do not, to your quote, that we do not put our hope in princes. Um, and we, we, we're not looking for a political leader to save us from the wrath to come. Right. That is That's not going to happen. That is not going to happen. <laughs> so I... I, I so, so that is not what we're looking to do. We're not looking to a political leader to be the savior. Right. That, in fact, that's um, that's blasphemous. That's treasonous. <laughs> right. That is not what we're looking to do. Right. But I am really grateful that our founders s- started a, a, a representative republic that we actually can have say in. We, we're we're doing ourselves and our our entire country a disservice if we don't make ourselves informed. Like you said, where we've got to do right. the grunt work. Right. It, it really does sort of bother me for one of two things to happen. Is, is, is one group to say, well, I know that I'm just going to vote straight whatever, straight the ticket right. and straight this and not do any thought, right. not do any research. Right. I respect the believers 
who look at a, 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 a party that might differ from a lot of things, but they say, but this part I actually agree with, they've actually at least done the homework to mm-hmm. say, I don't think that everything this group is saying lines up with scripture, and maybe th- this these people are saying some good things. Right. You know, we just, we're putting our minds in neutral if we just say, I'm just gonna vote straight this way. I'm not right. saying you don't do that. Right. I'm just saying, you, please do some research. Please think about these things and pray through these issues. Right, right. And, and, and my issue there is really for, um, if you if you read a lot about what you know Jesus talking to the Pharisees and and Paul talking to the to the early church, it wasn't as a lot of times he was harder on self professing believers he than he was yes. non believers. Yes. And so right. my issue is if you have a biblical model for what God has said, mm-hmm. why would you why would you vote for What's obviously not a biblical model. Yes. For example, we you know we delegate, uh, or, or we we discuss ways in the church to be fiscally responsible to to handle with attention to detail and care mm-hmm. the resources that God has given us. Uh, so Proverbs chapter twenty two verse seven says that God warns that borrowers are slaves to the lenders. Um, so that's a pro fiscal responsibility mm-hmm, statement. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if you have a church that is that is doing their best to to manage the resources and not be re- wasteful with the resources that God has given them, well, why would you why would you vote against that? Mm-hmm. If there's a model for fiscal responsibility, which is mm-hmm. obviously what what God has ordained, why would you vote against that? Yeah. Um, if God has ordained that. Marriage is obviously between a man and a woman. Mm-hmm. Why would you vote against that? Yeah, and I'm exactly. speaking to believers here. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Second Thessalonians chapter three verse ten says God instructs the fair distribution of food only for those that work. Mm. So, uh, so he's he's pro work. He's Absolutely. certainly not pro right. laziness. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, yeah. so my issue has always been, and we've talked about this yeah. before, especially on social <laughs> media. It's not so much unbelievers that say things about this, it's mm-hmm. it's believers yes. that say yes. certain things yeah. about right. this. I, I, it, to, to his point, so so we th- there, believers can get accused uh, of being one-issue voters. That, that I've heard a lot this, this, right. this cycle, but it always happens. You're one-issue voters, they're usually pointing to pro-life, <laughs> but you could point to a lot of these that come biblically, okay? Yeah. My... My thought, and, and, I, and I, I read this, we've talked about it a, a few times, is that we're not necessarily one-issue voters, but there are issues that are disqualifying mm-hmm. for political figures. Mm-hmm. If a political figure said, my, <laughs> my tagline is um, theft and murder, you know, vote, <laughs> yes. you know, Smith, theft and murder, yeah. we would say, those things disqualify that. Right, you right, know? Right. I don't think that makes sense. Right. So... When we say we might, when we feel the pull to be one issue voters, mm-hmm. one issue voters, and it's life. What I'm really saying is, it, for me as a believer, it is disqualifying for a person who's running for office to say, "I believe that murder of children is per- not just not just legal." That's been already mm-hmm. fought and done mm-hmm. with in, in right. many respects, <clears throat> but now they're saying there's a there's a there's a, a contingent that says we believe that the the um, the taxpayers should pay for those murders. Mm-hmm. So explaining this to my children, this is just personally, um, what I'm I'm saying is I get paid from Clayton Baptist Church to do uh, a job by leading worship. And what this could turn into is that part of the money that my church pays me is going to go to taxes that pay to have baby slaughtered. Right. Where in that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is that okay by God? I don't see that in right. the scripture. Right, right, yeah. Which, which brings, us, brings us up to another point. I'm, I'm going to bring up that point, but then I want to digress a minute as well. <laughs> but that very thing brings us up to a point that as believers, voting is our opportunity to promote, 
protect, and preserve godly government. Mm -hmm. And if we choose not to vote, then our not vote is equally as influential of the outcome yes. as our vote is. Mm -hmm. not, not voting is a form of voting. Yes, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. Less, right? Abs okay. In our country, it definitely it is. It is. Sure. Okay. Um, let me digress a minute. I want to go back to just a, a couple of extra verses to tie back in because mm -hmm. as we look at, um, and this would apply not just to individual candidates, but to, to political parties, mm -hmm that, uh, again, just because they may profess to be Christian doesn't mean that they have biblical beliefs. Um, uh, this, is, this is a passage from Isaiah. So this is, this is Old Testament. Uh, this is God talking to Isaiah. Isaiah 29, 13, the Lord said, "'Because this people draw near with their words "'and honor me with their lip service, "'but they remove their hearts far from me.'" And their reverence for me consists of tradition learned from rote. In other words, mm. mindless tradition, repetitive. We mm. just do it because anybody can stand up there and say, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. But God knows the heart. Absolutely. And so ultimately, it's, it's where does the heart fall. Then New Testament, uh, this is Titus 1.16. Uh, they claim to know God, but they deny him by what they do. Mm. So, you know, it's just, it's not, it's not just claiming God, but it's how are you living out your life? Are these things evident? He, he goes further and says, they are detestable, disobedient, and unfit to do any good. Mm -hmm. And then in 1 John 2, 4, uh, John says, whoever says, I know him, but does not know what he commands, d does not do what he commands, is a liar. Mm -hmm. He's a liar, and that truth is not in that person. So it... It really puts a lot on our plate mm -hmm. as believers to do research, to, to go and figure those things out mm -hmm. because Satan is a master of disguise yes. and deception. Yes, sir. And he will dress it up to make it look like anything he thinks we need for it to be seen as. That's in accordance with the way that he works. He, he takes this great evil mm -hmm. and wraps it in this shroud mm -hmm. like it's a great thing. Absolutely. Like, like a woman's right to slaughter a baby in the womb, mm -hmm. or if a baby is born and it's on the birthing table and mm -hmm. she decides that she doesn't want it, mm -hmm. it has been wrapped up like that is a victory for women's rights. Yes. Right. Yes. That, we are, that we are celebrating yes. this, right. this progression towards, towards medical equality yeah. or something. Yeah. 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 So as believers, passing up that opportunity to vote means literally we're letting those that would sling mud on the name of Christ mm. have their way in our lives. Good grief. Mm. So, so really the burden falls back on, on us. Mm -hmm. uh, again, if we're, if we're going to stand back and do nothing, so the leaders that we elect or the ones that we do not vote to remove mm -hmm. have tremendous influence mm -hmm. on our own freedoms. Mm -hmm. um, we have to take responsibility for our actions and our choices as well as our lack of actions and our lack of choices. Yes. I, think, I think biblically voting becomes a stewardship responsibility Absolutely. for us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, God gave us all of our resources, and, and one of them is the ability to make choices, and we have to do those choices in a way that honor, honor Him. Mm -hmm. uh, so to waste a, to waste a vote is to, is to squander a gift. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, Cliff, you you mentioned uh, a while ago. Um, you were talking about the our forefathers founded this nation as a as a republic. Mm -hmm. It's it's really interesting when you come up with the two words, because so many people talk about democracy mm -hmm. and yet a republic, and and the truth is that true democracy, true democracy is actually a process within the formation of a republic. Yes. If you, if you look at nations around the world that use the word republic, and, mm -hmm. and while United States of America doesn't say republic, mm -hmm. um, our national anthem does say that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our Pledge of Allegiance does say mm -hmm. you know, to the republic, to the republic for which we stand. So yes. when we do the Pledge of Allegiance in honoring America, we are recognizing that we are part of a republic, yes. which is which is public-centered. Mm -hmm. It's public-centered in that we have a vote, and that vote becomes part of the democratic process. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Yeah, you know, it, uh, there's obviously there are many reasons why the founders decided to do it the way they did it. And that that type of governing style puts all the onus on the people. And the people have the right mm -hmm. every two years or four years or six years or whatever it is to say, okay, you did not represent us very well. <laughs> so we're yanking you and we're going to put someone, someone in who will re represent yeah. us. Mm -hmm. And and the, the the democratic if it was a if it was truly just uh, flat democratic it would be um, the those who have the most people would have the most power and anybody that was in any minority would get overwhelmed nonstop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Again, we're we're squ we're squandering this gift mm -hmm. if we don't take part in it. Mm -hmm. So no vote. In, in my opinion, it's not an option. Yeah. Yep. You said in the article that you wrote, uh, you made this statement. You said Christians should be involved and outspoken in political arenas because we should be laser focused on the goal of God's glory and the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But then you also followed by saying, but our nation has a problem. <laughs> 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 and that problem obviously is sin, yes. and it's not just the nation's problem, it's just our human yes. nature problem. Yes. Um, in order for us to have the freedom to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I think this is so important that we, that we recognize this, yes. that our, our responsibility as Christians is to preach, teach, and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But in order for us to have the freedom to do that, we have to stay vigilant and we have to fight for those freedoms. Yep. And I love this quote that came out of your article. You said, our freedoms came at a great cost, and they are not guaranteed to continue. Yeah, that's right. And that just gives me chills, mm -hmm. that, that one generation after another would let it slide to a point that we would possibly lose those freedoms. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It does not take looking into history to see this. We can look right now in countries where people have decided to relent their say and allow government leaders to take charge and and become either dictators or stronger dictators and what inevitably inevitably happens is Christians are forced underground now, mm. now mm -hmm. to your point about is is God allowing um, ungodly leaders to rise for something. Those are the things we don't see, right. and we don't know, and those are really hard to think through. Is mm -hmm. God putting us through something so that we as believers will get shaken and awoken to the right. fact that we're, we are not in many ways doing what God designed us to do. And if it takes this kind of awakening, mm -hmm. we actually should be thankful. That's hard to be thankful for. Right. Right. Right, right. It is hard. Um, both both of you are, are are fathers of much younger children than mine. Mine are grown and married, and I have grandchildren now. But um, and I know Cliff. I know you've had several discussions mm -hmm. with uh, with your kids, particularly being a, a little older than mm -hmm. than Jamie's kids. Um, so I guess it's kind of a, a twofold thought here. Is um, how, how are you explaining this election <laughs> process to your kids? And, and I guess, Jamie, for, for you, um, what, what, is the, uh, what is the fear and the concern mm. for the very young children that you and your wife are raising? All right, I'll go from so older down to the younger. <laughs> so so um, it actually has been a little um, difficult to communicate well the um, great importance of the situation we're in and the desperate need of the hour to do what God's called us to do because you don't want to elicit fear in your children. You don't want to um, magnify a, a, an issue because you always want to point back to we serve a king. Mm -hmm. You two children have already confessed Christ. No matter what comes, you're secure in him. Mm -hmm. However, the conversation has centered on we, we want to make sure as best we can that you have the type of freedom 
to, to do what God's designed you to do without fear of being silenced or shut down or pushed out of society. I mean, just simple gifts like, you know, one child has been given the gift of music very, very clearly. The other has music, but that's, that's his primary gift. And the other has been given the gift of athletics and sports. So for years, athletes have been able to speak to speak out for their faith. You look mm -hmm. at Tim Tebow, the way that he did that when he was in even professional athletics, he was able to do that. Boy, they didn't like it, but he could. Right. Well, what, what if the day comes where she's not able to, to speak? That I don't, I don't want her to have to be in that position, right. not just selfishly, but I don't want that for our nation. Right. Um, right. And same for him musically. I, mean, you know, I want God to be, I want him to be able to use the gifts that God's given him without fear that if if they come if they come out as bible believing christians mm -hmm. okay you're second or third tier people we don't listen to you anymore you don't have opportunities right, right. so for me <clears throat> um thinking about politics and and our courtney and i's boys um my biggest concern moving forward is that um can, can I teach them biblical principles about the truth, about what God's Word says, regardless of how much the world is in their face, mm -hmm. and telling them something to the contrary. Mm -hmm. And we are called to, to die to ourselves mm -hmm. um, and live for Christ. And no one wants to see their children be bullied mm -hmm. or picked on mm -hmm. or isolated right. or considered weird or, yes. co or considered outcast. No, mm -hmm. no one wants to, to see that. Um, however, mm -hmm. um, our, again, our allegiance is to Christ mm -hmm. and, what, and what He has said mm -hmm. and our rejection of the world. So as hard as it is to know that they, they may look weird, look different, um, as hard as that is for, for me to see them go through, because inevitably it's going to happen. Oh, yeah. There's going to come a point where, where in raising them the way that we've decided to raise them is going to contrast very starkly <clears throat> from what they're either being taught at school mm -hmm. or they're seeing their peer group mm -hmm. do or what they see when they go to college. Um, as hard as that is for, for Courtney and I to have to see, uh, I think about God, how hard was it for him to give up his own son wow. to die? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think about that from time to time with my own children. Um, I remember I, I saw a picture one time and it really just, it just, it got a hold of me. It was, um, it was a little boy, he was four years old and, uh, and he was in a diaper, which is too old mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. four-year-olds mm -hmm. and he had no hair. Um, and he was going through cancer treatments. Mm -hmm. And his, his older sister, who was seven or eight, was patting him on the back, and he was standing over the toilet, mm -hmm. and, and he was sick. Mm -hmm. And I'll try not to talk about that without getting emotional. <laughs> um, but it just made me get down in the floor, literally in my living room, mm -hmm. and thank God for the health of my children. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. And... But then the more I dwell on that, I think of regardless of whether it's being picked on, being bullied for, for, for being a believer in Christ that yeah. children might go through mm -hmm. or, or a sickness that they go through, mm -hmm. um, God didn't spare his own son. Exactly. Right. And, right. So, and I've got to be okay with that. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and so that, that's what I think about moving forward is, is teaching him, teaching both of Jackson and Cale the truth of God's Word, yeah. um, knowing that, that they, could be, they could face persecution. Yeah. The Bible's clear that things are not going to get better. Yeah. In fact, they're going right. to keep getting yeah. worse yeah. until the yeah. end. Right. Um, and so that's, we love our kids. Yeah. Everybody yeah. does. Yeah. And you don't want to see anything happen to them, but, but we trust in the sovereignty and the will of God. Yes. Right. We're, in reality, we're, we're guaranteed to suffer. Mm -hmm. We're guaranteed right. persecution. I right. mean, we, we want to stave it off as much as we can, right. but right. we're guaranteed as Christ right. followers. You're right. 
and kind of in, in closing, I'll, I'll kind of bring that full circle back around to <clears throat> as, as believers, first and foremost, that we serve a king yes. and we are part of an eternal kingdom. Mm-hmm. But as sojourners passing through this great nation that God has placed us in, uh, Cliff, you, you, you ended your article with this quote that God has blessed our nation with great freedom so as to fuel the spread of the gospel throughout this entire globe. We must not squander this gift. Amen. So we, we as Christians, as Americans, we very much have a responsibility to do the research but to cast the vote and to do so with uh, with with much thoughtful prayer, which mu- which with much guidance through mm-hmm. God's word, mm-hmm. and with much trust and faith that He's in control, mm-hmm. and Absolutely. and the outcome is not a surprise to Him, whichever mm-hmm. way it goes, yes. and that we are to be obedient to His will. Amen. Amen. Amen.